Morning all and welcome back to another video taking a look at some interesting bits of vintage aviation tech. Uh, today I've got something uh, quite interesting actually. Let me show you this. It's quite heavy and it's a big black box and it's actually a jet engine control box or starter panel and we're going to have a quick look look inside and see if we can play around with it. Might even get it to work. Anyway, let's have a quick look inside. Right, so here it is and I got this thing off a friend who happens to deal with uh, Cold War jets and vintage um, aeroplanes and as you can see um, it's got a lot of stickers and labels on it and I think it, this uh, box was actually uh, probably returned to, for service or um, just overall maintenance. It's um, It's got a label there and it's made by Rotax and it's a label as a starter panel. I don't really know much more about it. I have a feeling that it's probably come from um, something like Jet, Jet Provost or something like that. And this box would essentially be inside um, the airframe somewhere. If it's on a Jet Provost, um, it would be at the front. But as I said, I'm not quite sure exactly what um, aircraft it's from. And what this does is um, it consists of a number of relays. We'll have a look inside in a minute. And it sequences the start. So when the pilot presses the button to switch everything on, uh, there's a contactor which connects the starter motor. And then there's... A whole series of relays which we'll show in a minute um, and sequences to um, bring in the uh, igniter box, the um, um, torch igniter or spray igniter, uh, fuel injectors um, in, in sequence uh, as the engine accelerates. Um, it also incorporates a soft start in this actually and again we'll go through that and because the starter motor of a jet engine um, has a really initial amount of torque until the ro rotating assembly is up to speed. Uh, unless you employ a soft start, particularly on larger engines, um, you can get all sorts of problems with um, uh, shaft, um, motor shaft uh, fracturing and braking and, um, and, and problems like that because the initial torque is very high. So the idea of this is to sort of introduce a, so a gentle start uh, to the motor and build up the speed slowly. So anyway, let's have a quick look inside. We'll take the box, the lid off, and have a look. Right, got the lid off this thing, and you can see there's some interesting uh, bits and bobs in this little box. Um, let's start over here. So we've got um, a series of connectors here. Um, spray, ignition, P2, P1, and negative. So the spray would obviously be for fuel spray, um, probably to to uh, operate a solenoid uh, to, at, the, at the start of ignition um, before the main fuel burners are brought in. Um, I know this, um, I think for, for something like a Viper, a Rolls-Royce Viper, um, a lot of them have um, uh, fuel start solenoids and things like that to, to enrich the fuel supplies the, you know, at, at the start of um, engine startup. We got um, That would be for the igniter to bring in the, the igniter plugs. The, to, to um, power the igniter box. P1 and P2, um, I'm not entirely sure, but I think these are basically um, for uh, the start of the ignition sequence. Uh, because when I pipe, put some power onto those, um, the main contactor here uh, came into play and also the uh, timer relay. And obviously you've got a negative switch, a negative uh, terminal there. Coming over here, um, this is obviously where the main battery uh, would connect in. So you've got B positive coming in here. You've got these big copper strips um, which uh, then are interrupted by all these for, uh, three more uh, contactors. And then B positive then that, that side then would then go to your um, to your motor, to your starter motor. What's interesting is what's underneath and again we'll show in a minute. So we, turn the thing over and on the back here you've got a further box 
and this is quite made of quite chunky material because I think it would get quite warm and I think in here would be it is actually a big um, steel resistor which is the soft start resistor um, it's probably made out of resistance very thick resistance wire and to get something to find a something similar these days are very hard to find um, so it's, it's actually if we don't end up using this box um, that whatever's in there which we'll have a look in a minute will be quite a useful um, spare to use in, in future projects uh, if, it, if, if it involves a soft start uh, so what we'll do is we'll we'll have a look inside here and then we'll also try and apply some power and uh, see what happens it's quite interesting because I think you know this is this has obviously been made in the days pre semiconductors and this uh, elect electromechanical uh, time delay switch would, would be replaced by a tiny little uh, integrated circuit. I mean, you could replace that with something like a, a 555 or something like that, um, which is a, f a fraction of the size. So it's um, it's really quite interesting on how they uh, manage to sequence um, engine starting using basically um, mechanical clockwork. Well, that's what it is. So anyway, let's um, let's have a let's Let's take the the rear off the uh, the underside and see what's the what's inside that uh, that thick box and see see there's a nice chunky resistor in there. Right, in typical REF fashion, these things are um, designed not to come off, and so they're all locked up with uh, steel locking wire, which uh, makes sure that the, the nuts don't come loose. I've got two of them off already so I'll keep working at this and try and get these uh, nuts off and hopefully we can have a look inside. So look at these resistors, you've got lovely mica uh, insulation there, one on each side and I don't know if you can see it, I'll zoom in a little bit Let's have a look. Just underneath this microfilm, you've got these big S shape. Well, I wouldn't call it an S shape, but spirally wound um, resistors. I don't know what this is made of. I don't know if this is simply stainless steel or whether it's probably some sort of resistance alloy. My guess is probably a resistance alloy because stainless steel um, does tend to. Um, the resistance tends to go all over the place as it heats up and it does get very hot when you've got uh, several hundred amps going through it. But uh, they don't make resistors like this anymore and uh, I know in the past trying to get uh, these can be quite difficult. And you can see here you've got different contacts, big copper contacts where each resistor is um, brought into play during the start cycle. cycle. So this is a really useful piece of kit. I mean, we can I mean we can use this um, this box as a, as a as a as a start unit for 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 some pretty big engines. I mean, judging by the size of these, I mean this this would be suitable for a starter motor at least up to a a Rolls Royce Viper, something like a five three five. Um, and usually anything much bigger than that, um, it, you know, you go onto the onto air starts. So uh, certainly as far as Jet engines with electric starter motors go. Um, this box should be able to handle pretty well, pretty well anything. So this was a this was a really good find, and uh, hopefully, plan to keep this and uh, use it on an engine uh, to start it up. Save me having to build up a soft start system. Right. So turn it back over, and. What we'll do is we'll have another look inside uh, the switch assembly and see if we can get the thing to work. Interesting, actually, never seen one of these before. So the um, the current which is going through this system basically goes through a loop, and obviously the magnetic field produced by that is going to be quite a few hundred amps going through there initially. It's going to close this relay, and we've got. Um, I put some light bulbs in um, just to demonstrate the, the uh, current going through the uh, 
which which would go to the spray solenoid and also to the um, well I think it's the igniter box um, during the start cycle so hopefully when I power this thing up uh, you should see the light bulbs come on as the um, as power is, as power is directed to the either spray solenoid or the igniter box um, we've got 24 volts that come in here that comes in here and um, when I apply power initially that will um, it's already powered up at the moment so there is some power applied to it uh, will um, sort of prime the whole system up and then um, you just need to press or apply 24 volts um, instantaneously to P1 and that essentially triggers the whole mechanism off, the whole clockwork thing off. Now normally obviously I haven't got a starter motor connected here so um, what I'll have to do is press that in order to uh, mimic uh, the, the high current going through there and that relay closing. Um, so that's more or less it. I think what we'll do is we'll we'll, we'll We'll, we'll, we'll try it out and see what happens. So, in reality, the instantaneous 24 volts would actually come from the cockpit. It would be sort of like a, a push and release type switch. So, if I do, if I apply 24 volts to this, let's see what happens. Hopefully, the whole thing will uh, come alive. So I've got to. There we go. So you can hear all the relays clunking away there. So if I release that now, that would suggest that the, uh, the current going through through there would decrease as the motor spins up and the engine spins up. So then it switches itself off. Um, I think what we really need to do with this is um, connect it up to a real engine and uh, I just might have a, something suitable in the garage um, and I think then it will get a better idea of it all working I think. Well let's just try that and then see what happens. Right we're back in the garage again now and I've connected everything up this is the starter panel here and we've got batteries and <clears throat> if we look over here we've got the Rolls-Royce R2 jet engine and hopefully um, we should see if it's if it works okay so let's connect it up and see what happens off as well so uh, quite pleased with that actually it does seem to all work and uh, what we'll do is hopefully use this um, little unit as part of a, 
It's part of uh, a project, hopefully, to get this Rolls Royce R2 uh, working. Anyway, thanks for watching and look forward to the next video.